Hello fellow flyers. In this short video clip we're going to fly the Howard Hughes Spruce Goose. Here she comes into Toronto Island Airport all ablaze. Look at those eight engines. Now this is a huge airplane. This was made back in the day during the war days. It was made all out of wood because the metal was needed for the war effort. So Howard Hughes as you may know in the Aviator film built this whole thing out of wood. Now there was eight engines in there, huge management of all those engines, a lot of weight here. Here it is, full flaps, coming in nice and slow, nice and low, and uh, just listen to the hum of those engines. What we want to be able to do is the same thing. That's me flying the thing right now as I come into Toronto Island Airport. Certainly can't land at the airport, but I'm just over flying it and landing in the Toronto Harbor. Now, you'll see me take off from Toronto Harbor soon, but let's get it positioned over by the docks right near the airport. To position this thing near the docks, the best thing to do is take a small plane, like a Cessna or an experimental plane, and just simply um, get it to the docks and then change your aircraft over to the Spruce Goose. <laughs> and then it, there it is, sitting at the docks, and away we go. So at this point, let's start up the engines. So we'll start up the engines again now, and what you want to see here, let me just turn around to the front view. And what we want to see is when you hit, the easiest way here is to just use control E. And as you see the engine start up, you notice the, the far left two engines, then the next two. And then now on the starboard side, you're gonna see the, uh, the nearest two engines start up. You gotta wait for it. I mean, this, it really did take probably longer than this to start up everything and get everything hum and ready to roll. And, uh, and then finally you'll see the, the last two start up and then we can get rolling here. And what we'll do is we'll just do a takeoff. We'll attempt a takeoff out of Toronto Island Harbor, which is uh, a sh too short of an area really. You're gonna see that when I actually do lift off, we're actually into uh, a shipping channel, which you know we wouldn't do in real life. But So I'm gonna get out of the harbor, that's for sure, but I'm going to land it further out past where the airplane is right now. As you can see, past the Toronto Islands is Lake Ontario and there's lots of space out there and that's where we should be playing with this thing that's for sure. So let's get this thing turned around and let's go take off and see what we can do with it and see where we can go. Ready, set, let's pull away from the dock and let's let her rip. Yeah, come on, come on. Now at the end of this clip, you're going to see a picture of me standing in front of the real thing. This is in uh, or Oregon, and somewhere near Portland. And um, saw the real thing, been in the real thing, actually got to sit in the cockpit of the real thing, and this thing is huge. Now I still can't lift off, I still have lots of back pressure, picking up good speed here. This thing's heavy. And you'll see that I finally do lift off somewhere around yeah, it's getting close to those shipping lanes, isn't it? So it wouldn't be something you would normally do. This harbor is typically filled with boaters every day. So you couldn't do this. <clears throat> but that's what's nice about Simulator. We can do this all we want. There's, here comes some of the ships. Yeah. So we'll lift off soon and we'll go and check out how far we can go here. Lift off any time now, Howard. It's getting nervous. We're down the shipping channel. <laughs> And I'm pulling up right about there, and we're off and running. So that was lucky, just lucky. It was first attempt, and away we go. Now, that wasn't what Howard Hughes did. He only went about, could it be a foot or two off of the surface of the water? Uh, stayed up there for a couple of minutes, and then simply landed again. And that was it. So here we get the, the chance to be able to do it. Um, in a more relaxed, more satisfying way where we can actually go some kind of distance. And that's what we're doing here. So what I'll do is, I, you know, we won't have to do the whole thing. I just want you to see it in action. You can fly this thing too. I'm gonna to make it available to you as a download. What I did was, I think it was originally made for uh, Flight Simulator, probably um, Century of Flight. And so to make this work in FSX, all I did was take the panel folder from, uh, I think from a DC-3, and just added it in here. And so uh, that's what you'll get when, when you see this download. When I give you this download, it'll already be able to work for uh, FSX. And 
and uh, you put it in the aircraft folder. So uh, here we'll just take it in instead of doing the whole long flight, but it didn't take long to get up there in the clouds. Uh, we'll just take it in now for landing. <coughs> we're going to reduce power. All I'm doing, I'm not even going into the cockpit, but we're just going to reduce power, uh, full flaps, and take it in toward the water. We know that the elevation is 250 and for the airport, so it's, you know, same for the water. And we're just going to take it in and put it close to what's called the Eastern Gap which is the entrance to Toronto Harbor. And that way we can stay out of the way and have still lots of maneuvering room there. So there's my reduced power. You can see the windmilling is changing now. And down she goes. I'm going to speed it up or, or uh, simply cut to where we're coming in for the landing. Because <clears throat> this can take a while being at this far up. Uh, and, and then just like any flow plane, we want to keep uh, the nose up the whole time while we're landing. Uh, make sure that we don't uh, dive into the water. And you can see there I'm heading back toward the Toronto Island area to the gap where we, uh, where we can go in and out of the Toronto Harbor area. Beautiful plane. I mean, look at that wingspan. When I went to see this at the museum in Oregon, uh, an SR-71 was underneath that left wing in the museum. I mean, that's how big this thing is. There was a whole bunch of planes underneath it. They actually built the museum for the plane. It originally was in California, but they brought it up to Oregon and put it into its own dedicated uh, 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 you know, aerospace museum kind of thing. So uh, it's worth visiting if you ever get a chance, if you're ever on the West Coast or anywhere near uh, in the state, you can uh, go find it, check it out, have some fun with it. All right, let's bring her in for landing. Power's off. We're pitching. Look at those flaps. Those flaps are barn doors. Look at those things. And so uh, we're going to take that in for landing near Toronto Harbor. As you can see, I'm pointing in the right direction. And believe it or not, you need a lot of space to go in for that landing. As you've seen in other videos, I like to say low and slow. Uh, this thing's fast and low and slow. How does that work? <laughs> so it's fast when it needs to, and uh, it can get low and slow all right. Look how long it took to come out of the water. Now this was uh, designed originally to transport troops, tanks, anything that is needed for the war effort instead of submarines. The submarines were being picked out of the water instead of submarines, instead of boats. The boats were being picked out of the water by the submarines, by the enemy. So they said, why don't we just fly over our stuff instead of floating it? So that's what this was made for. It's just a, a, it's a flying tank, and it can hold tanks. So here we are coming in. As you can see up in the upper right corner, that's what's called the Eastern Gap. It's something you can call when you're actually flying in. Maybe you're on a base towards 26. And uh, that's where we'll head with this. And that would be a common place to go where um, you're still out of the busyness of the harbor. So that's what we're doing. We're coming in here. We're probably around 500 feet now, 400 feet. And uh, we'll do a flare somewhere around, you know, 40, 50 feet uh, and start leveling out here. The engines are down to idle, all of them. <laughs> and uh, and we'll, we'll shut them down. We'll have a quick look inside the plane before we finish this video. So. Here we go. You can see I'm doing a, a bit of a flare because you can't just do a snap flare at the end. <clears throat> We're getting close to the water. We'll see the shadow coming up. There it is. We're almost ready to touch. Come on, Howard. Flare. A little closer to the gap. Yeah. Flare and touch. Yeah, the, the right pontoon touched. And then, of course, we don't have any brakes. We don't have reverse prop on these things. So we're just hoping the barn doors will just slow us down and we'll eventually stop. That's all there is to it. So you see, it, at, at some point here, I'll just simply cut the engines. I mean, even even idling engines might make us coast for a little while longer. So uh, I'll just simply cut the engines, and uh, and then we'll make sure that we don't go any further. Up ahead there is where a lot of boat traffic will be coming through the Eastern Gap, and above that, you know, at a thousand feet or so, is the circuit. We would come through the Eastern Gap on the circuit too, so it should be very familiar. Anyway, that's enough coasting. We don't want to get too far into the gap. 
Keep in mind, if you want to taxi around, you could do it with just certain engines. Here, let's cut the power here. Now, you, you could taxi, like if you need to do a sharp left turn, you could just turn, turn on or just have um, the, the far two left engines running, and that'll pull you around, believe it or not, all right? Like these are the things you can think about when you're, when you're actually flying something like this. So there they are spooling down. They're just free spinning at this point. They're not even running at all. And you can see I'm stationary in the water now too. Those things will come to a, a, a stop. But in the meantime, why don't we just jump inside and just have a quick look at uh, whoever designed this thing, just have a quick look at. You can see the size of that cockpit at the top of the plane, very tiny little area. All right, and yet it was a spacious cockpit. Here we are looking out the window at the, at the, the motors, looking around, there are the motors. Eh, we can look back, we, you know, I mean, like typical airplanes, we can look around while we're there. Those two gray panels on the sides man all of the engines. So four engines on one side, four on the other, lots of electrics, lots of uh, hydraulics, etc. Let's have a look at the cockpit itself. We can see the empty seat on the right and look over there on the left and let's just see what's happening there. Yeah, controls are free, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, there's Howard Hughes. Come on, move that control column, t show us you're still alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's kind of funny, you know, that they actually put that in there. That's that little tiny cockpit at the very top of this big, huge plane. So here we are just looking around, but there's not much more to see. But that's the little tiny cockpit, believe it or not, way up top. And, uh, and then the whole plane is just a huge cavernous thing. All right. All right. So from here, we'll just, uh, we'll just um, jump back outside and finish up. I just want to show you the picture of me standing in front of the thing to get an idea of the, the, the enormity of it. So let, let's segue to that picture here. Here, take a look. There's the size of the thing. There's the door open. The water level will be just near that. And uh, yeah, it's big. It's big. <laughs> Thanks for watching.